Welcome back, everyone, to episode 14 of the Post Post Podcast. With me, as always, is my co-host, Chris Ronan. Watching anything interesting on YouTube lately? Honestly, dude, I'm a big fan of the Charlie's videos. You guys, you ever watch those guys? <laughs> Love those, those guys. Those guys are hilarious, aren't right. they? They're just the goofiest <laughs> bastards. They just come up with anything. He's Make blown up. Out of it. Yeah, both of them. Right. Trevor Wallace and uh, I don't even know the other dude's name. He's Charlie's, though. Charlie's, yeah. yeah. Uh, remember the first one I watched? I think it was the same as yours where, like, uh, what are they uh, underneath the sand on the beach? Yeah, at the beach. That the one's heads. good. Aha! <laughs> no, dude. What about you? You watching anything good? You going down a rabbit hole <laughs> uh, at all? Yeah, I was telling you about a rabbit hole earlier. So it was like literally the day after we recorded last week, YouTube was just like, all right, enough of hockey. Uh, have you ever heard of sumo wrestling? And I'm like, that's interesting. And Vice put up a thing about um, what sumo wrestlers eat in a day. And I was like, I'm just curious because, like, they're big dudes. Well, some and girthy lads. Some girthy lads. So then, like, they eat this thing. So you would assume, like, they eat, like, just burgers and stuff for, like, how big they are. But there's this thing in Japan called chankonabi, which is, like, like good protein, like chicken, and, like, it's all vegetables. And, like, they don't eat breakfast at all, but when lunchtime comes, they, that's all they eat is fucking chankonabi. And they sit there and eat, like, 13 to 14 bowls of that, and just lunch. And I'm like... Holy and wh- shit. when you say bowls of that, is it like mostly like all protein? It's like all protein, all vegetables, like almost like like no rice, no rice. I wow. think um, that's weird. At dude. one point, I did say like a little thing of uh, rice that they had, but other than that, it's just compared like, to like thirteen bowls yeah. of like meat and so veggies. Like, that's crazy. They got big off of like eating like good, healthy food. I'm like, that's so interesting, huh? You would think that's like, wild. They would just be eating burgers and shit, but yeah, yeah, nope, not at all. <laughs> They're they're good fat, not bad fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like huge fat. <laughs> good These protein, are, bad protein. I fell so after that I was like I got more interested and YouTube knows you're interested, so just like, all right, let's I'll show you some sumo wrestling fights. And there's this guy called Toshi Notion Suyoshi. He's actually from uh he's not from Japan, he's from Georgia, which is a country it's north of Turkey. Yeah, it's in the Middle and East. He's well known in both China and Japan. Like people love him. And I've been finding videos left and right of his sumo uh, sumo wrestling or whatever the hell they call them. Um, matches, I would matches. think. Matches. Right? And it is like so all I can think of when I watch it is uh my first and only time going to like a Patriots game was like those pre games. Yeah. My uncle gave me a ticket to go watch it and we're like up in like the not the bleaches, but, like, um, Putnam section or whatever. And, like, you can hear and feel these guys, like, just colliding with each other. Yep. But, like, these guys, the sumo wrestlers, man, they, they're pretty much wearing nothing. They have the diaper and that's it. And, like, they, they're, like, 6'4", like, huge guys, like, 330 pounds. And, like... They can pick each other up and, like, throw it, people. It's insane. Yeah. Like, they just, all of a sudden, they get up with so much force and just, like, just bang into each other. And I'm like, if you're not ready for that, you're going to be thrown. The one thing, the cr- one crazy thing I'm watching about these sumo wrestlers is uh, just the way everything is. I get like it's old style, but like they have like this little ring. You're supposed to like, you could you have, you could do whatever the hell you want to get that opponent out of the ring. I've seen someone like get choked to death, like someone got slapped, like picked up, do whatever you want to get them out of the ring. But there's people who pay good money to sit like around the ring, and you see like these 400 pound you get guys sat on. Get, just get flung into him like what the hell do you do when there's like some huge wow. guy just on and i you? thought like the the courtside seats at a basketball game were dangerous that's crazy <laughs> that's dude nuts. yeah so you're watching like yeah uh, to- uh toshi notion just like get thrown in and you're like god is that person like okay but it's uh it's kind of funny so like the big thing with uh sumo is everything is like um uh respect there so like you can't whenever like someone wins even if like a champion like the championship guy doesn't like celebrate it at yep, all. Yep, yep. Because it's to respect the opponent. But like at the same time, like I've seen fights where the opponent gets thrown into like the crowd, right? And the guy just like turns around, like does, doesn't even acknowledge him, doesn't say like, "Hey, you okay?" They just go on with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of weird. But I'm like, oh man, I am hooked. And now YouTube knows I'm hooked. Cause so like it'll now be like hockey, Toshi Notion, and I'm like, which one do I pick now? Dude, this is almost as mind-boggling as your uh, crumb story from last week. Like, <laughs> you put in my mind in a pretzel already again. <laughs> Jesus. Watch. Your phone's listening in right now. You're mm. going to go on YouTube and just Toshi Notion is just going to be This is up. the real test. Like, I've never Googled anything sumo in my life. So if it pops up, man, like, they're listening. <laughs> That's a fact. Um, so let's get into hockey. Uh, so we got Sidney Crosby with his 1,000th game. 
I'm kind of surprised. I feel like he should have hit this by now. Yeah, right? I feel like he's been around for a long time. 2007, right? 2006, 2007? Yeah. So that's uh, 13 years. Four, oh, 13 and a half wow. times 82. And yeah, he, I guess that's right on schedule. Has he been out with injury at all? Like one season, I think? Not that I know of. Was he out with injury? I think injury? there was one season he was injured for a couple games. Still, a like, you'd think he'd hit it by now. When uh, when we were doing – when I was doing the um, – uh, Jesus, I can't think. The the thing for Velcro? This. Yeah, the Velcro for notes. this. Yeah, the notes for this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I couldn't, like, he's, I thought the way they were saying the 1,000th game and everything was, it's like, oh, he's in, like, this small list of people. And then I looked up the list of players who played 1,000 games plus. There's 1,000 of them. And it's a <laughs> massive list. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, he's nothing real, I mean, special, but, like, it's <laughs> Nothing real special. Yeah, a lot of guys do make it that long, but it's all it's all the big names. Like if you think about all of the legends in the league, and then all like the second line players that do play throughout their career in the NHL. You know what I mean? Right. Because those third and fourth line guys aren't gonna make it there because they're bouncing up and down. But those first and second line guys, if you think about it, right? right. Six guys on every team. Right. Thirty-one teams in the league. You know, that's they're crazy. bound to hit it if they stick around and prove themselves. So. That's cool. Yeah. Some. Uh, I don't know who the number one guy was because I was I kept cro- scrolling. Was it Gordy Howe? Crosby. He's up there. I forget it, who has the most games. I can't in the remember league. who's number one, but I'm like, holy shit! You got to be in the league for like quite some time to hit we that. We did number. this uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. We were talking about Marlow. Marlow's second for all time game played, right? Yeah, and Joe that, Thornton's that's, like yep. seventh. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, no, no, what I love too was the stick is cool that Sidney Crosby got, but they had a collage of Sidney Crosby. Uh, it, it was like a collage of like all the goals he scored in like the thousand. Oh, sorry, no. It's a picture of him in all the games leading up to the thousandth game of him, and it looks like Sidney Crosby like made out of those pictures. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's so sick. So, so that's cool. So we'll see what happens. Like again, you gotta be, you gotta be in like tip top shape. Like, you know, and I mean, he is. He's he's one of those Tom Brady kind of guys, just dedicated to the cause and just right. hockey is his life. You know, he'll do it. Um, so last week. We talked about the outdoor hockey game, or the outdoor outdoor games, mm-hmm. and unfortunately we weren't able to talk about it because it wasn't till that weekend. Yep, yep. So, so this is our first time recapping. This is our it. first time, yeah, recapping. I got it. a couple of nice koozies from my boy Jack at Boston Beer Company. So thank you very much for these. Nice. Uh, outdoor NHL Outdoors Lake Tahoe 2021 koozies. This is sick. Pretty dope, right? Love I got the uh, you brought your Bruins Winter Classic jersey from a few years back, so right. I got that up behind us too. Um. So, do we dive into the Golden Knights, Colorado, or should we do the Bruins fly? I think we should do the Golden Knights, Colorado, because they played first, and that was a real debacle. The NHL that showed their true a... colors. Cra- yeah, that was bad. Right. I, I kept – so, they had an issue with the ice. So, the first period, you think, ended, and then they were like, we have problems with the ice. But when you go back and rewatch it, players, refs are just – breaking into the ice and like almost hurting themselves like it was bad some player was digging at it with a stick and like the whole toe of his stick that wasn't taped was just hidden in the ice that's how deep it was that's like what the hell that's how someone can get like really hurt yeah the only reason um the only thing i could think of too was they've done it before 2008 like years ago before 2008 the outdoor stuff but 2008 on it's kind of become a normal thing for like outdoor hockey Mm -hmm. so i think they would have like figured it out by now yeah i mean every year we've heard people complain like oh the ice wasn't great quality like all that stuff yeah you know? but i'm glad they got it together so that game man so <laughs> uh so they had one period and then had a start the second period eight hours later and then <laughs> what i found cool just random facts that will never be broken in the nhl again was the second goal of that game was scored nine hours to the second apart and then it took 10 hours and 37 minutes was the actual time for the game to finish. Huh. I'm like, that's a random like thing to think about. Yeah, I wonder if that beats the um, Tampa Bay and Columbus overtime game. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that now? Last that was, year? That was last year last in the playoffs, year. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Feels so long ago, though. You know. But, um, yes, Colorado rocked those Quebec Nordiques jerseys. I absolutely love them. Yeah, that game that game was awesome too. Uh, two for two on my picks, by the way. In your face. Yeah, you nailed it, huh? <laughs> I yeah. called. I was rewatching, and I said, I said Vegas. You said Colorado, and then well, it was we, a lot closer said, of a game than I thought. We both said Bruins, but yeah, yeah that that was that was a better game, game to watch. I think. 
Uh, that was, yeah, it was a good game. Uh, I just, so after that game, I, I gave you the, the website for all like the, the jerseys, the retro reverse jerseys. And I'm like, oh, they're a good price, man. I'm going to buy some. They're all like $180 each, but they're all sold out. I'm like, oh, man. oh that's funny. Brutal. Um, so let's get back to the Bruins here. So the game after that was the Bruins on Sunday, which was a lot better. Uh, the first period, I noticed uh, Tuka, both goalies, uh, Tuka and um, Carter Hart, both had like issues with the sun for that first period. Tuka was almost worse. The sun was just blatant, his, blatantly in his eyes. At one point, like the puck bounced off the uh, boards right in front of him, and the way he reacted, it felt like he just he thought he should he thought he should go down at that time because he had, probably had no idea what the fuck the puck was. Hmm. So after that, though, man, second period, third period, the sun was down. It looked fucking gorgeous. Yeah, and you said this was a lot went off a lot better, but I think honestly they evaluated their situation, said, "Hey, two thirty start isn't going to work." They moved it from it was initially three, three and then two right? thirty, and then they bumped. No, sorry, three and then two, right. and then they ended up bumping it to seven thirty. Right. So it was like, what the hell? Seven thirty Eastern, so it was four thirty there. They got like a nice sunset first period, and then second nice. and third it got dark. I think they learned from that first game though. Because yeah, yeah, what was the? Um, I wish I wrote that down. I can't remember how uh, hot it was, but I, I did see people was... on the boats, like on Lake Tahoe, in like shirts and shorts. Yeah, just I jumping like, in the nuts. water. Yeah, maybe they're crazy. I don't know. <laughs> could be, could be. So that game actually broke viewership record on NBCSN with uh, 1.68 million viewers. It was the most watched regular season game in NBCSN's 15 year history, which I found shocking. I mean. Great game to watch, but I didn't think that many people would watch it. I don't find this as shocking. Hockey is probably one of the smaller sports now. Like, I would say – I sent you a video last week of some someone. I don't know who it was, but he was going on and saying that hockey is probably the seventh sport now. It's obviously football, base, basketball, baseball, hockey. And then he put even UFC and MMA before it mm-hmm. and, uh, like, eSports and soccer, like European soccer, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, honestly, that's not that surprising to me. And it's a regular season game. People love playoff hockey, mm-hmm. but who's really giving a shit about Bruins Flyers in the regular season, you know? Yeah. Hockey fans are, but. Yeah, I get a point. And think about the season timing, too. Most of the NHL season is right at peak football, and then it yeah, ends, right. basketball's going, and then baseball starts up right away. Right away. So, if, you ha- if you're another sports fan as well as a hockey fan, you have three other markets to compete with, you know? It's all, that was always brutal uh, in high school because, like, <clears throat> a bunch of the guys, I guess, weren't – I mean, they loved hockey, but not as crazy as I was, man. So, like, we're, like, almost to, like, the end of our season. And instead of, like, talking hockey, they're just like, oh, I can't wait to get back into, like, playing baseball and stuff. I'm like, all right, let's focus on, like, yeah, hockey yeah. right now. Uh, Bruins were wearing those 90 swags. Man, that, that, was, that was amazing. That was unreal to see. I thought it was really cool. I love the um – the 1990s cup design on uh, the tracksuit that someone was rocking. <laughs> that was hysterical. <laughs> My favorite one is Bergeron, man. He fucking nailed it. It was the, um, what do you call those things around the race? Fanny pack. Fanny packs. Yeah. And then he had the old Cam Neely Bruin shirt. Yeah, he had a Walkman on that was working, he said, nailed but then it. it stopped working. <laughs> nailed it. I didn't even know they were doing that. All of a sudden, I'm scrolling through Facebook, and I'm seeing these photos. I'm like, is that really Bergeron? And then, like, the whole team, like. And if you think about it, it was either them or the Flyers are the only two teams that could do it. Colorado was kind of they were around but like they were transitioning from the nordiques yeah, right right and then uh vegas obviously wasn't around so no, I, I think the bruins were the best team to do something like that and it was hysterical <laughs> to see <laughs> you know Pasternak at the end of the game uh remember they had him in the interview and he, he was still rocking like those the 90 shades or whatever and then uh, he's like well i was rocking out to the bobby girl song but you guys had to take me out and do yeah. this freaking interview <laughs> he's like yeah they told me i have to come talk media and i don't want to do it and now bobby girl's not playing and i don't know what's going to be playing when i get back his accent is the best man i love it he's the man dude he's a legend uh so you know more than i do uh we're watching i was watching some things on instagram uh kevin hayes was mic'd up about, like, not ratting? Yeah, you know I don't know that. what was going on. I don't know if he was getting sent to the box or he was just sticking up for his teammate, but the ref, he's telling the ref, he's like, no, you got the call wrong. Like, he didn't do anything. He's like, oh, yeah, who did it then? The ref's like, actually, he sounds pissed. He's like, uh, I'm not a snitch. I'm not telling. <laughs> he's like, well, then who did it? Like, what do you want me to do? You, you know? got to love him for that. Hilarious. Like, I don't know. You figure it out. Yeah, put him in his place, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dust the ref. Why not? Uh, in this game, 
uh, when I was watching it, Carter Hart had a rough, rough game. And all, all the goals, I'd like go back and rewatch it. I'm like, there's no way. All the goals he scored were all glove side. Like, it was weird to see. And like, for some reason. This isn't the first game that the glove side's been an issue for Hart either. Right. It's it's just so weird. One shot, man. I, I sent it to you. Pasternak, one of the goals of his hat trick was un. Believable man, like he wasn't looking at all. Even after yeah. he threw the shot, nothing. And it like top cheese glove side on on a heart. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. But yeah, glove side was rough on heart for uh the first two the uh, yeah, the first two periods. And then Brian Elliott came in and we oops, sorry. So I texted you right away after watching this. Brian El- El- Elliott, a veteran player, was a starter for St. Louis Blues. Uh we talked about goal- cold goalies coming in. And they showed Brian Elliott as the team's coming out. He's sitting there doing a little warm up himself to. And I don't think he even knew he was going in because Hart came out of the second period. They were heading to the locker room. Mm-hmm. I think Elliott was honestly just trying to just get out on the ice. No, just get out on the ice and enjoy the outdoor game. Like oh, skate maybe. on the ice while he could enjoy it. You I know was thinking I mean? that might have been a veteran move for him. Just to... we talked about like guys not getting able, being able to warm up. Maybe just like take whatever time you can to. Gets some kind of warmed up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's part of it too, for sure. Yeah. But so, like a moment like that where you might not get to play. Like I think he was just trying to like trying to just be on the up. ice and enjoy it a bit, you know. Gotcha. Um, so moving on from the outdoor games, which is fun as shit to watch. Before we skip on, actually, the Flyers uh, fans are really stressing about this. Um, they are not having a good go. They were probably one of the favorites to win the East. The East Division isn't looking as hot as they once did at the beginning of the season. We were saying it was going to be like one of the tightest divisions. Yeah. The Islanders are looking hot right now, and the Bruins are looking hot. But the rest of the division, man, it's just a skid. Rangers, Buffalo, Jersey, Philly, like it's a toss up. The Bruins are running away with this division, don't you think? It's insane. It's crazy. It, it, it's crazy. Some some of these teams. Uh, we talked about this. I feel like every episode, but some of these teams are just like they used to be good. Now they're bad. And it's now one season. Yep. It's, it's and the so Flyers, good. honestly, they're missing like half their squad that game too because of COVID protocols. I, I wonder if it's just because of the divisions. Like you just play teams in the divisions. Is that – Or maybe you're uh, learning your opponent too. You know what I mean? Oh, just the maybe. fact that you're only seeing these this these number guys. of teams yeah. rather than seeing every team in between. Interesting. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Just it's, wanted to chime in with that real quick. It's weird. Definitely weird. Uh, interesting, but weird. Um, so, after all this – the outdoors. Um, Canadians lost against Ottawa in a shootout, and almost right after, Claude Julien and uh, Kirk Mueller lost their jobs. Yep. Uh, now we have assistant coach uh, Dominique uh, Ducharme, I think was his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's now the head coach uh, through the end of the season, and now they have uh, Alexander Burrows was named assistant coach. A player? Uh, I think it's yeah, I think it's Alex Burrows That's from like crazy, Vancouver. That's right? crazy, dude. That's nuts to even think about that he has only been out of the league or like I don't even know how long he's been out, but was playing in the league Just ten a few years, years ago. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? right. And now he's already an assistant coach in the NHL. That's Not crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what? they lost back to back to Ottawa. Like that's that's a bad sign. It is a bad sign. But do you think this is something that they wanted to do? And I think this was the breaking point for Claude Julian. Uh, it could be that. I also think that it kind of seems like the same scenario when the Bruins let him go because I think that he was like a broken record and the players are just like, yeah, 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 I hear you, coach. It, like, it might be that there's there's like different ways that coaching can go. Like, on your way out as a coach, you could be the guy that's screaming at the players and pe- they're like, I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear it. Like, right. I'm done. But there's also the rah-rah coach that's that's – cheering you guys on and tell, saying, like, let's go, boys, let's get together. And that can even become, like, a broken record. Like, yeah, we get it, pal. Right. We're, we're working on it, you right. know. So, I don't know. I don't know which way Julian swings, but I think that the players honestly just drowned him out and the staff saw it, decided it was time to find something new, you know. Very weird. It's uh, it's just coaches being coaches. Yeah, so I, actually, you know, it's funny. Last night I was watching – um. I think it was HBO, the 24-7. They had, like, a compilation of just coaches, like, screaming at their players. I love it. And uh, Tortorella was – I kept going back. I'm like, God, I love – when he was in the, with the Rangers, he goes, you fucking – yeah, just really giving it to, like, all the Rangers. And then Peter Laviolette, that was kind of more lean back, but at the end it was like, get your shit together. And there was another coach that was, like, still – oh, um, it was – um. Who's the coach of the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins? Oh, Dan Bowsma. He was he was stern, but not like 
you know, screaming at everyone like Tortorella. So like, I think that was those are like the great, three great examples of like the coaches different coaching you will styles. Find. Yeah, and I think Claude Julien is one of those guys that I think he might have like the sternness, but not like the the fire that like Tortorella and Laviolette have. That I think some of the guys are just like, yeah, whatever. He's not yelling at us. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll calm down. Yeah. So I don't know, like. Is that the reason why the Bruins got – like, he won the Cup with the Bruins. I know it was definitely the players drowning him out in Boston. I I remember that. I I don't think it was him yelling at them, but it was more of like a, all right, this is like kind of old, you know. Interesting. Need to change the pace. And Bruce Cassidy came in hot, man. Oh, Bruce Cassidy came in. And it's always smart to – it's kind of weird here. They fired their assistant coach too. It was smart of the Bruins to keep the assistant coach because the players know him and, you know what I mean, respect him. And now he's the head coach and give him a shot. But it could also be that you want new staff entirely and you clear house top down, you know? Maybe. So we'll see what happens with this new coach. Uh, it, it's funny how, like, you could be a head coach, but it depends on the players whether you keep your job or not. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I mean, coaching definitely has more of an effect in other sports. Um, I do think play, like drawing up plays and certain things like that, like changes the game of hockey. But, like, a coach has a lot more impact on the game in basketball and football specifically. Right. And baseball, too, honestly, because they're doing, they're doing a lot more things with, like, switches and, and right. tra- slides. I forget what they call them. Um, but when, like, the outfield all switches up, like, this guy hits the ball 90% to left field, so we're going to bring all three outfielders to the left field because he's going to hit it there. You know what I mean? Right. So coaching, I think, has a lot more impact in the other three major sports, but definitely uh, definitely has an impact in hockey too. You know? Sure. I think uh, Montreal Canadiens right now, what are they, six or fourth in the league? Like, they're up there. So I wonder if this is going to change anything. I wonder if, yeah. wonder if they're going to get better or worse or stay the same. Six or fourth uh, in the division or in the league? In the league. That's, like, Kind of nuts. Like, that's really good, and they're going to fire their coach. They're going to fire the you know? coach. Isn't that weird? That's nuts, yeah. So I think you're right then. Maybe they just needed a, an excuse to Maybe get Maybe there was something just be like, hey, Claude, get the, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, Vegas and Sharks game tonight, which is Thursday, has been actually postponed due to Thomas Hurdle, sorry, Thomas Hurdle entering the NHL COVID-19 protocol. Uh, so far, the NHL has postponed 41 games this season, 37 because of COVID-19 protocol, and four were weather-related issues. I couldn't find uh, when I was when I was doing this the four weather related issues. I feel like was one of them. I feel like was the after um, Jesus. Uh, what the hell? I can't even think today, man. Uh, well, I, I think that Dallas was one of them with the um, the storm that came in there and knocked out some power, like in major areas of Texas. Like I I imagine at least one or two of those games were because of that. But, like, you don't really see weather-related issues when it comes to hockey because it's an indoor game. You Not know? weird. But I it could have been more than that, too. Like, it could have been three or four, all yeah. four of them. Yeah, I thought I thought it was weird. You you made sense when I brought this up uh, that just for some reason Thomas Hurdle, that was it in his COVID-19 protocol. But you said, you know, he's been around the entire team. Mm-hmm. You don't want the entire team around the other team. So it makes sense. Yeah, but like, for- if he's definitely positive, you got to send them into lockdown kind of thing, you know? Right, exactly. Um, maybe they didn't have enough players to play without whoever he was in contact with, you know? Maybe. Just interesting to think about, like, how one player can cause an entire uh, uh, cause an entire two teams to postpone their games. Anyway, this week, Henrik Lundqvist came back on the ice after having his open-heart surgery. Uh, he's looking like he hasn't missed a beat. There's a practice video that we saw on Instagram, and it, I thought his heart was going to explode watching him do it, but... Man, he, he's back, ready to go with those new pads that he's got, new mask, looking good. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think that he was going to come back just for health reasons, like for his own safety, mm-hmm. not necessarily like he's out of commission. I was just thinking, like, why would you come back after something like that? Like, that's kind of major. Like, yeah. I, I imagine his family's at home like, Jesus Christ, Dad, are you going to go doing? back and do that? Yeah. I don't know. The king's still on his throne. What Where? throne? He's in, <laughs> he's in what? Washington might so Washington. might have an actual throne. We'll so what, see. I heard um, Sam Sonov got. I talked to my Capitals friend at work. Um, I heard Sam Sonov got sent down, and they brought Copley up too. So another name to add to the carousel in Washington. Another two <laughs> names, technically. The one the guy that I'm, I, this is the one guy that I said episodes ago, probably the last episode, it was like Phoenix Copley was that guy to come up and you know take the reins, and then all yeah. of a sudden this Vitek Vanacek comes in out of nowhere. So what are you what are you thinking? Is Lundquist looking like he's coming back? 
I don't think it's going to be this season. I asked him, which and is I asked my buddy, brutal. and he was like, I really hope so. Like, I'd love to see him play. Right. But that's all I really got out of him. He he follows them, like, dead on. You know what I nice. mean? But, uh, I mean, I, I think they're going to try to roll without – like, assume he's not coming back. Right. And then if he does, great. You know what I mean? Here's the issue with him, though. He's only signed for one season. So, after this season, it's just like, what the Caps going to do? Are they going to talk to him and be like, can you play next season? And – if they even want him, Vitek Vancek is almost taking the spot. Yeah. But they're going to need a good backup. So if he I does I mean, come having back, a nice veteran presence in the locker room, too, to, to coach right. Vancek up. You so know? it'll be interesting what the Caps do. I'd like to see him get, season. like, a back office job, kind of like what the Bruins would would have liked for Chara. You right. Know? That'd be cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't see him come back this season. If he does, I'll be shocked. You said he wasn't going to come back at all, but I still think he's going to try to make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if he's practicing, I think he's going to, too, now. But, I mean, I just didn't think health-wise that he should. Yeah. Um, how about Kuznetsov, though? Kuzi. <laughs> Warm-ups the other day. <laughs> so, Evgeny Malkin, it's his thing. After everyone gets off the ice, he he's, he grabs a puck and dumps it down the other end and gets it in the net. I think Kuznetsov knows that that's what he does. So, uh, someone was recording him, and he, he dislodged the net that they have and turned it around and put it against the boards, and they left. And they're like, the guy who was scoring was like, the hell did you do that for? And then all of a sudden he sees a puck go flying through and looks back, and it's Malkin, like, shaking his head and getting off the ice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do something to get into, like, the heads of these guys. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, honestly, I see that as, like, a disres- disrespectful thing to do, and I'm, I respect Kuznetsov doing that. Like, right. <laughs> you keep your pucks down there, we keep our pucks down here, pal. All right. right. Figure it out. Like, some guys have just that – um that routine that they have they do every every so i'm sure malkin does it every game yeah but it's just this one game probably to just get him off and be like yeah you know, like it, like you know, crosby's routine tying his, skates. tying his skates everyone uh did that for his thousand, thousand game. game everyone came out in crosby jerseys and copied his entire <laughs> warm-up and everybody stops mid warm-up and unties and reties their skates <laughs> hilarious i showed him too he's just looking up laughing yeah like, another so cool. another one is uh becoming big around the league is last man off the ice in warm-ups Tyler Sagan was, pro- I think, one of the first guys to do it last season or that a couple seasons of, ago in yeah. Dallas. And um, he wants to be the last guy off the ice, so he would literally have, like, a standoff with the, the player on the other team just trying to be the last guy off the ice. And I think he did a rock, paper, scissors, too, at one point. But mm-hmm. uh, this season we saw Marshawn and who was it? I can't remember. I, know he's I don't even remember it. who it's, they were playing. Marshawn and another player. We'll, we'll look it up and get it on the screen. But, yeah, it got to the point where they had to do a rock, paper, rock paper, scissors rock, to, paper, get scissors to get off the ice. And Marshawn lost, lost that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember Marshy ever leaving the ice late. Doing Is that. that like yeah, I don't thing? remember him doing that either. I think it might be just like a new thing for these players to do. Yeah. So last week we talked about uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, and we talked about um, Kevin Lankin and getting the Calder right. Yep. So this week the NHL put up the front runners for trophies. And I was kind of interested, so I, we're going to talk about this today. Uh, I'm going to rattle them off real quick, too, for you. Do it up. <clears throat> so, for the Hart Trophy, from each, each division, we have Marshawn from the East, Kane from the Central, Kopitar for the West, and McDavid for the North. Mm-hmm. Out of those four, who do you think is going to get the Hart? That's uh, the MVP for their team. Hmm. I don't know, man. Thinking Connor McDavid? Yeah, I'm thinking McDavid, too, for sure. I mean, I haven't heard, obviously, crazy rumblings of Kopitar. What Kane's done with the Blackhawks is huge, obviously. Right. And Marshawn's just a beast. But, yeah. like... I feel like in, Connor McDavid's done more. Yeah, in the sense of, like, an MVP for your team, I think McDavid's the guy. It, it probably could be Kane, though, mm-hmm. where he's brought a team that was looking at the season as, like, a wash at the beginning of the season. You know, right. like, we have nothing going for us. Especially with Taze out, all, like, all those new guys, too. Mm-hmm. And that know. comes into, into factor, too, when they look at this trophy. It's... Where is their tre- team based on what this player has done, you know? Right, exactly. And then for the Norris, which is the top defenseman in the league, we have Charlie McAvoy in the east, Victor Hedman in the central, Kale McCarr in the west, and Quinn Hughes in the north. Quinn Hughes is a big name, man. He is a big name. I don't think we see enough coverage of him no, we don't. out here. Um, and, I mean, honestly, I'm thinking McAvoy for how he stepped up on the team. Right, me too. McCarr got the Calder last year. And Hedman, I think, got the Norris last year. Right. I love Victor Hedman. Fucking too. huge guy. I would never want to take a slap shot Definitely. from him. I think uh, one thing they take into factor in this trophy, too, that's important is um, plus minus. And the way that the Bruins are playing, mm-hmm. his plus minus can't get huge because they're not scoring a ton of goals and they're 
Right. Not letting up a ton of goals. Every game seems to be a one or two goal game. Right. You know. I feel like I hear a lot of Kale McCarr too. So yeah. I think it might be toss up between Charlie McAvoy and Kale McCarr. Yeah, because that that's another thing is it's all about the points you put up as a defenseman for this trophy too, which is right. kind of dumb. Like right. they they praise the offensive defenseman. Like there should be an offensive defenseman trophy defensive and a defensive defense, defenseman defense, yep. trophy. And then uh, we have the Vesna Trophy here. We got Varlamov in the East, Vasilevsky in the Central, Grubauer in the West, and Anderson, Freddie Anderson in the North. A lot of good goalies, man. Like, Varlamov, for sure. But then you got Vasilevsky, you're like, yeah, obviously. And then Grubau has been a god, so you're like, yeah. And then Anderson. I feel like Anderson, not this year. Maybe last year he was up there, but it, it's a toss-up between, for me, so for me it's going to be a toss-up between Vasilevsky, Varley, and Grubau, but I do want to save Varley for this year. Yeah, I think it's either Varlamov or Anderson. Honestly, look at how good the Maple Leafs are this season coming yeah. off of what they were last season. You know, right. the improvement that they've seen and being strong in net is a big factor in that. But exactly. Varlamov's numbers have been insane. I think he might win it just for having that big bounce back year. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. And lastly, we have the Calder, which is the rookie. In the East, we have Ty Smith on New Jersey. We have Kevin Lonkinen in uh, Col- uh, Chicago. We have Kirill Kaprasov in Minnesota. And we have Tim Stutzla in Ottawa. You know what I'm going to say? I think you're going to say Stutzla. I'm going to say Kevin Lankin because he's on the list. Wow. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm going to stick with Stutzla. He uh, mm-hmm. scored his first shootout goal for Ottawa the other day, and so did um, Trevor Zegras in Anaheim. They finally brought him up. He was ripping it up in the AHL, and Anaheim could use some help, so it's good to see him ripping it. I saw that. So Zegras was from – where was he from? U.S. We talked about him. Oh, the U.S. That's I right. don't know That's right. where – right. Cali, right? Was he the Cali – no, it was a Cali goaltender on the U.S. team, I think. This is going back up. I forget. This is a long time. Yeah. But he's definitely from the U.S. because he played for Team USA. Right. Because he was, like, one of the best. We saw Stutzla come up because he was, like, a god. And then – Ottawa needed it Ottawa early. Ottawa needed him. Mm-hmm. And Zegras – yeah, he talked about me. I didn't, I didn't even know he came up, and you, you were the one who uh, sent me the Yeah, post. it was kind of funny. Both of them this week scored their – First shootout goal, and Zegers did it, I think, in his second NHL game. He is already put into the shootout lineup, which is kind of nuts if you think about it. Like, right. all right, kids, second game in the show. We're going to pick you uh, out of, like, three players to shoot right. over all of our roster, you know. <laughs> it's like, damn. Holy and he scores, shit. dude. It was nasty, too. That's awesome. He made it all look like stick handling and then released it just very sneakily and ripped it over That's the nuts. glove side. It was nice. You got to you gotta look good in where he was. Where was he, AHL? AHL, yeah. AHLs. The Gulls, I think they are for Anaheim. Yeah, I for forget Anaheim, what they yeah, are. The goals, something Gulls. Right. Something Gulls. Got to look good, man. I think that's. I know that goes with management too. I feel like you, you look like you're ready to play. It's like good for them look. to call them up like that too. That's a that's a bold move. Yeah. You, know? you you could ruin a guy's career like we talked about a few episodes ago. Oh, easily. Um, should I say? Should I read? I feel like I shouldn't be doing verbatim. But I feel like I should be on this one. San Diego Gulls. We nailed it, dude. We're so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next on the list, and actually last, is uh, Artemi Panarin. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, he's been in some allegations that the New York Rangers actually have his back on, which I love to see. I, I love. They don't necessarily have his back in saying that he's innocent. Right. They have his back in saying we support his decisions and whatever he's going to do to handle this. Right, you know? exactly. Which is which is bold of a, an organization to do. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't see that in the NFL where you have someone beaten, beaten a woman. Like, th- that happens a lot, a lot in the NFL, and, and the NFL kind of stays quiet on it and right. doesn't chime in because, honestly, you can't really because you don't know both sides. It could be someone just going for money. It could be the dude beat the shit out of a woman. You know what I mean? It's like right. – you don't know, so it's best to just stay quiet. So it is cool to see the Rangers backing it. It's mm-hmm. awful if Panarin did do this, but from what we have in your report here, it seems like it's kind of speculation or for false. sure because it's like they they don't have zero evidence of this at all. So he's taking a leave of absence after allegations from his former KHL coach. So it's not it's not even the woman at all. It's his coach. That's kind of nuts. Yeah, Andre Nazarov from the HG Vityas. Uh, told a Russian newspaper that while the team was on a road trip to Riga, Latvia in 2011, Panarin got into a physical altercation with an 18-year-old woman. He said Panarin sent it to the floor with powerful blows. He also said a criminal case was open, but the local police was paid 40,000 euro to cover it. Panarin remains at his home in Connecticut and doesn't have any plans to return to Russia. So Andre Nazarov, which was which, 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 coach, coach, why can't I say that? 
He's actually a former NHL player as a wing. He started with the San Jose Sharks back in 93 and then bounced around a lot. From the Sharks, he played for Tampa, Calgary, Anaheim, Phoenix, uh, Boston, and then Minnesota in 2005 before coaching in the KHL in 2008 for Chel- Chelyabinsk Tractor, which is his hometown team. Nice job. That's a tough one. Yeah, I was like, he's getting scared <laughs> toward the end there. Uh, Nazarov came out and said he was motivated to speak on the incident, in quotes, because he disagreed with Panarin's repeated criticism of the Russian government. The New York Rangers organization has Panarin's back on the situa- on this with a statement on Monday. This is clearly an imitation, uh, sorry, intimidation tactic uh, being used against him for being outspoken on recent political events. Artemi is obviously shaken and concerned and will take some time away from the team. The Rangers fully support Artemi and will work with him to identify the sources of these unfounded allegations. Yeah, so I was wrong in what I said. They absolutely have they his back on this. That's nuts. Back, right? So Panarin has been vocal, uh, a vocal critic on Putin the last month. Uh, he was posting the support of opposition leader Alexei Navalny, uh, who has caused quite a stir with Putin in Russia with an incredible amount of support uh, for Navalny compared to Putin. Do you know about that at all? No. So it's basically like the next front runner for president. For there, president. Right? Yeah. And Putin's not liking it at all to the point where, like, um, for the people who, like, supported support Alexei Navalny that came out, man, like, Russian police were coming out and, like, beating him and, like, bringing him to prison. I guess and I, I guess Alexei Navalny left the country for something and then came back and now he's in jail. Putin put him in jail for that shit. How long do you think uh, Putin's been president? Don't look at my screen. <laughs> Putin, man, is it is it is it longer than you think it is? Yes. Putin, 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 Putin. Uh, two thousand. How old is Putin? Uh, I'll say two thousand ten. So he's actually been president for sixteen years, but they were split terms. So he did his first and second, and then some other guy was in between them, and then he did two more. Holy he's shit! He's sixty-seven. It's crazy, dude. It's kind of it's kind of wild to even think about that. Putin's got the iron fist in Russia, man. If you don't support Putin, you don't you don't oh. support Russia. And that's scary to think about, though. All it was is Artemi just not supporting Putin, and you got the KHL coach being like, "All right." Well, like I said shit. too, the way that the KHL has been rigged, Putin's favorite team always gets to win. So I mean, he's probably got tight connections with the KHL. He's a big hockey guy too. Yeah. You ever see him skate? Oh, Putin? It's hilariously it's hilarious. terrible, and the goalies let him score. Let him score. Like, they just let him win, and it's it's such a joke. It's kind of like um, Kim Jong-un playing uh, basketball and beating <laughs> whatever that NBA player that goes over there to play with him is. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> I saw a, uh, he, one of those goals that he has, and, like, the whole team on the bench was, like, having to be happy for him. So he's, like, kind of, like, skating around, giving everyone high fives. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, and they're all like, yes, we love you. Yeah, Thank we you. Love you. We don't want to die. So ready for this quote? If Russian President Vladimir Putin, 67, mm-hmm. takes a six-year break every 12 years, which is like the rules, mm-hmm. and lives until at least 2054 when he's 102, he can serve three more terms or 18 more years as the president of Russia by the rules. <laughs> what? So he could serve another, what? what do they say, 18 more 18 years more after years. doing 16 already. Holy shit. For a total of 34 years as president that's nuts Dude, i don't know russian he's russian he could do it yeah yeah i mean if, <laughs> if the government wants it the government gets it right that's fucking crazy that's uh it's rough for Artemi panarin man but uh hopefully we get more positive um feedback from this later on this week but it, if we do find out this is all bullshit you know as a khl coach because a player that you used to coach so doesn't support Putin and to come out and say and accuse him of something like like that. It's wild to think about. Like if you put it into spect- perspective in like the NHL, if if some player was like, yeah, I don't like, I don't know, Biden, I don't like Trump, and then his some former coach is like, yeah, well, you you beat some girl up one time, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? What <laughs> from like ten years ago? Yeah. yeah. I, also, I don't have any fucking evidence of this. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's yeah. gonna believe me because you know I'm the fucking coach. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? It's so weird to put it into perspective <laughs> like that, but Russia gonna Russia. Russia gonna Russia. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much all we wanted to talk about this this week. Um, what's going on, man, for the week? What's going on? This when do you week? want to get back into hockey, man? Me? I'm a, yeah. 
I just got my chest protected back. You saw the thing? Oh. I paid 70 bucks, and a friend of a friend brought it up to, I think, one of the guys that repairs the NHL equipment. And, man, like, it, both my arms fell off on the chest protector. Like, it was beat, like, ready to be thrown away. <laughs> I was about to go buy a new one, and that's, like, 400, 500 bucks, right? I was on you to buy a new one. You right. showed me. I'm like, dude, get rid of it. Like, yeah, it's no it, good. it was nuts. And um, I got it back this week. It's been gone for, like, two months. But I think he has more important clients than me to deal with. <laughs> um, but the thing looks brand new. So it cost me $70, dude. And the, the chest protector is brand new. Like, I just got a new chest protector for $70. That's and incredible. it's, like, top of the line. It's incredible. Yeah. It, it, looks, it looks brand new when you gave it to me. So I could get back into it whenever, but I, I think I'm going to wait a bit. Wait a bit. We'll see. I think I'm going to cut back to probably, like, one night a week, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you, what's the last time we played? Uh... April or no? Yeah, yeah you've played. Oh, really? April, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think. No, I, I thought you played before. I thought you, you didn't. When? I thought you played around like November, December. I might have gone like once or twice. I don't think December, definitely not. November, nope. Oh, no, definitely not since I got married. I think I played before I got married. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because now they think about it. I've never had like my wedding ring on under my glove. You know what I mean? That hurt. I would imagine not, but just. I, I, like, imagine putting my glove on. I would have been like, oh, that's weird that I have this, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, I definitely yeah. haven't played since I got married, which is September. That's nuts. So it it was probably, I might have skated once or twice, like, July. But yeah, before I, that, it was, like, once in March, and that oh, was it. Oh, interesting. I thought you played, uh, I thought you played recently. No, and then I dropped the chest off in, like, like I said, three months ago. So I haven't been able to play. People have texted me, too, and. I'm like, I don't have my chest. That's the worst so. for us. I guess right now you have the time to get shit like done like this, but like if anything big happens, like your mask or like pads like need fixing, you can't what are you play. Gonna do, you know? And yeah. you got people like, can you play? I'm like, I don't have gear. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like I don't have back. Someone gear someone told me if I get a chest protector, will you come play? I'm like, no, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good right now. I can't wait to get back. I, like power play, hockey league. I wanna know what that's like. You chucked that- up your blue pads too. Those are nice. Those Vaughn V7s. <sighs> loving them, loving them. They look so sick. I just, um, you know, I don't like them. You are loving them, but you don't like them. I don't like, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna be the one trying them. I want to see. I don't, dude. Blue's not my color. I don't know. You're gonna give them a go. If you want me to. Yeah. I, I want to know what you think. Okay, I'll try them out. I mean, I'll try them out so that you can see what I, my opinion is on them. If that's what you want, yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I think you'll know. Um, what size are you? A three thirty-four. 33. 33.1s. Little small. Yeah, plus two. They Might be a little small for me. What, what do you have right now? 34. Uh, 34 plus twos. So the, uh, but I buy, like, one size bigger and let them scrunch down as I play. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, gotcha. I see, what, yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, so when I got – I used to do 35s plus Jesus. ones. But this is before – so the um, the sizing changed. Yeah. So 35s – Became 33s. Became 33s. Mm. So like when I was looking at thirty fives, I can't remember who told told me this. Like it must have been goalie monkey, or uh, it might have been pure hockey. But guys at pure hockey don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It must have been. I had him in goalie monkey. Savage. Yeah, right. Uh, I was looking at thirty fives, and I'm putting them on. I'm like oh, these seem weird. And the guy came over and he goes, "What do you got?" And he goes, 35s. I'm like, "Yeah, those are too big for you." I'm like, "I always have thirty fives. He goes, "Oh no, everything changed." And they gave me the thirty threes. I'm like, "Oh yeah." So. Do you know what's weird for me? I noticed with sticks is um. The inches on that, if like I usually use a twenty-seven, like this brand. If I do a twenty-seven, another brand, like it's different. It's entirely different. I'm like, what the hell? What mm-hmm. is this? You know, like twenty-seven inches should be twenty-seven fucking inches. What right, are you doing? Exactly. C- CCM's like that. I do twenty-eight for CCM. Uh, my bower is twenty-seven. Like it's it's so weird. But you, ha- I feel like for sticks, you gotta know, like you gotta go to a store and like know what you want. Because then from then on, you can be like, you go online and just order it and be like, mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I have, I know I need 27 for this. I know mm-hmm. I need 28. I, I've gotten ones where like the paddle is so like, so small where I'm just like, ah, oh, shit. Like the paddle is small, but like this, the shaft itself is, is just like long. Yeah, and huge. I'm like, this is dumb. Yeah. My, uh, my mother tried to get me one year for Christmas a stick and I opened it and it's the full right stick. And she's like, <laughs> you're a righty, aren't you? <laughs> I told him I want a right stick. <laughs> I think that's awesome. For <laughs> anyone who's not a goalie, a full right goaltender wears his glove on this hand, and a, and a regular goalie wears it this way. Yeah, so. Michael Hutchinson's a right goalie. So if you look up Michael Hutchinson, actually, no, we'll put it right there for you. So Michael Hutchinson's a right-handed goalie, and pretty much any other goalie in the league's fucking left-handed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's difficult to um, get the right-handed. Uh, the only reason why I know is because Trev 
Travel Oil is on YouTube, man. He's a, he's a righty. So I get to get, like, a kind of inside perspective of what it's like to be right. He can't find shit. Like, uh, you know, like, you know when you go into, like, a goalie muck or whatever, and, like, you have that, like, corner of the store for, like, all the, like, the right-handed goalies, yeah. like, coming And I feel like their um, their glove and blockers are always on clearance. Because no, yeah. one, no, no one buys, buys them. them. Yeah. And he can't, he's always complaining about game. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's because you're righty and yeah. no one makes well, righty. Well, it's, it's full right, though. It's not righty. Like, I, it's me full and right. you are righty. Right. Yeah, yeah. But this is called like full right, full right you know. Yeah. yeah, it's weird, isn't Just it? Weird. Yeah, yeah. Weird system they got. It's like calling everyone midgets. Like, you play with midgets? No, no, no. That's that's. Oh that's yeah, yeah. They midgets. changed that. I think because it became politically incorrect. Like you're talking kids, right? Yeah. Because mites, peewees, midgets. Midgets. Yeah, they changed that. I forget what they call. It. They changed. Oh, it's it too. changed. They now? did. Yeah, yeah. Politically incorrect to call them midgets. That's. F- it's hilarious. Fucking hilarious. I don't have. Do I have it up? I do. Let's find out. Keep talking, and we'll figure this thing out. Uh, Hockey. Party dancing on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> Love your search history. Midget's name change. Why did we look that up? Uh, one year for Christmas, I I pranked my brother. This is way back. He was probably eleven. I was like fifteen. He left his Christmas list on the kitchen table, so I wrote. This was like when Trailer Park Boys was big. He was watching it when he was eleven, and <laughs> I wrote at the very bottom of it, "He wants a copy of." Dirty Dancing VHS, and my <laughs> my mother bought it for him and wrapped it on Christmas. And he was like, "Why did you buy me this?" <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's not, it's not telling me. I'm, I'm here, and it's just it, all all it is is saying it said it right down there. The drop name. midget. Yeah, it's drop midget, but it doesn't say what like the actual like they'd have to give it like a new name, right? Yeah, I don't see anything. They want the term has been it. used as a youth youth age category title across several sports. However, the word is considered a derogatory slur. Yeah, I wonder what they changed it to. It's funny. Yeah. After noticing the term, uh, who has a young son with dwarfism, reached out to a local youth basketball Oh, basketball has it too. In Guelph, Ontario, after noticing the term midget on a banner at a mall. That's so weird. Uh, I guess, like, I don't know. Like, did, did they change it already, or are they in the process of changing it? That's interesting. Now, now you got me going, man. Now you got me going. I didn't know about this. <laughs> when did you find out about this? Uh, it's just been a thing, I'm pretty sure. That article's from 2019 that you just pulled up. That's what I'm saying. Yes, it's just been a thing. Midget, no more. Stripping division. Uh, let's see. SPV Dude, the Panthers are red hot right now. First in their division. No, no, we'll figure this out. That's nice. Following the recommendations of task team, the minor a- hockey wow. age division will become... Oh. So let's switch. Oh, it. they change it by age. Yeah, yeah U7, like, like U9, U13, lacrosse was like that. Right. Yeah, under seven, under nine, under thirteen. Interesting. So yeah, dude, the Central right now we got the Panthers with twenty eight points, Lightning with twenty seven, Blackhawks with twenty six, and Hurricanes with twenty five. That is a tight race. And the Panthers are hot. Panthers are crushing it, man. Wow. Where's, the, where's Tampa right now? Tampa's well, second. Second. Yeah. So you got Florida and Tampa, both Florida. Yep. That goes back to what you're talking about about Florida being another. Um, like yeah, Champa Bay. Champa Bay. Yeah. That's, it hurts to hear that. Why? You don't like it? I don't like it. Why not? It's like calling Jordan Bennington Winnington. It's yeah, like, yeah. That I cringe at because it's a person. I like Champa Bay because it's a place. It's just a place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Legendary. I like calling uh, Bill Clinton. I call him Chill Blinton now. I like that one. <laughs> we said um, that on Discord the other night. Yeah, yeah. Dying. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the East, we got the Bruins with 24 points, tied with the Capitals for per- first at 24 points. Islanders, 23 points, and Flyers, 21 points. So that's tight, too. Out oh, in the West, Golden Knights, 23, Blues, 22, Kings, 21, with the Yotes, 21. Hmm. And in the North, you got Maple Leafs running away with it, 32. Oilers, 26, Jets, 23, and Canadians, 22. Wow. But Ottawa is uh, turning it around a bit. Last time we talked about them, they had like three, two, three wins. They're seven and fourteen now. They're on a three-game win streak. Last five, they're five, five and zero. Oh, so, I gave I gave uh, Ottawa shit. I was on their uh, Instagram, and this is when one of their first games, one of the first games they won out of that three, and uh, on their Instagram they're like showing all like the celebrations, and everything, all the fans that they had. I was like, yeah, we won, and I commented. <laughs> I got so much hate. I didn't think people would even see it. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, you guys finally won a game. And, like, Ottawa fans were just blowing me up, being like, oh, cool, good, tough guy. And they must have saw Boston whenever it goes, fuck you, you fucking Boston. Oh, my God. You probably have post to post podcast in your bio, too. Now I do. Steve Ottawa hates us, dude. You're, you're, you didn't think anyone online would see your internet comment. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we're going to find out. Let's do a shot. We're going to find out. You want to do it, man? Yes. It's only 49 minutes in. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That's a good time. It's a good time, you think? Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, before we do this, uh, one, la- one last thing I did want to talk about was- Hey, wait, wait, wait. You hear this? ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's actually a few games that uh, we found out through doing this. That it's difficult to do the breakdown for. It's difficult to really show what I'm, like what I'm talking about. But there's been a few games that this week that I do did want to break down. I just gotta find a way to do it. Like I, I don't think we can. I don't think I can edit something and put it on YouTube because we'll still get flacked for it. We? I've seen a lot of. Uh, I mean this. I don't know why we're talking about this here, but I've seen a lot of praise for doing those kind of things on like a story, like an Instagram story and a sure. Facebook story, even though it's only 24 hours. Right. I think you're able to save your stories to like a section on your Instagram. So like mm-hmm. you could do like put it up on your story. It's up there for 24 hours, but then you save it. And then like in your profile, when you go there, there's like all your pictures, obviously, but above that and under your bio, right. there's like, you can make different categories. You could do like all of our breakdown stories are here. All of our promo stories are here. Things like that. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So any breakdown story you do, you can save here, and then they're all there forever for people to watch. That might be pretty something cool. I'm going to start doing. Yeah, because I've heard very good things about doing that on the stories because I don't think they can nab you for it, really. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, I want to put it on Facebook, but if I'm going to put it on Facebook, I want to And Facebook put it on and Instagram, too. like Facebook owns Instagram now, so if you do a Facebook story, you can link your Instagram, and it's done. One, oh, really? One story, and it goes to both platforms. Oh, okay. You know? All right. I got to get around that then. But, uh, yeah, if anyone wants me to talk about anything they saw this week, definitely let me know. But I, I have I also got a list of stuff that I definitely want to put up on Facebook, Instagram, now that we've talked about it. Yeah. But let's do this shot, buddy. Let's get it done. Uh, I finally have the Bacardi uh, – oh, God, I already screwed this up. The Dragonberry <laughs> that I said I had last week, but I didn't. Nice. This will be, be better, I hope. Hopefully. Yep. I got Dr. McGill Cuddy's peach. This will definitely be better than that cheap Irish whiskey I did it's gotta last be week. Better. But it's got to be better. I'm not really a peach guy either. What I think I might start doing too is I don't really like the nips. Like you're pouring them in and it's like glug, 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 glug. You got to wait for it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Do you swallow as you do your nip or do you let it fill and then swallow the whole thing? I think I let it fill and then swallow I it. do the same thing, yeah. So for me, I think I'm going to start bringing my shot glasses down. You know I have a ton of shot glasses. Yeah. I'm going to use a shot glass from now on and pour my nip into a pour shot glass. In. Thick nip is one full shot. You think so? It is fifty milliliters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. That's how they do it. I'll just do the nippies. Yeah. Nippy poo. Nippy poos. All right, Doctor Miguel Cuddy's peach down peach. the hatch. Cheers. Down the hatch, buddy. Let's go. <sighs> wow, that's oh. very sweet. <sighs> that it doesn't taste anything like it used to, man. Oh God, that tastes like fucking cough syrup. Oh. <laughs> One of our listeners was saying he looks at your shot face every week. This is a good one. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> you thought that was going to be good, too. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is bad. You all right, this dude? You got a puke? Like, this is one of the worst ones, man. Really? Yeah. You were was, talking it, about this. Like, you loved it. You slammed two bottles of it on a bus up to Montreal, Montremblant, however you say it. <laughs> you know how, like, your, um, your, um, your taste buds are different. Yeah, they change they over change. time. Yeah, I think that's it because that was fucking awful. Yeah. Oh man. I'm. I'm I do. I. I truly think you don't like the taste of liquor. You've just adapted to Jameson and you're fine with that. That might be it. Because I, I, I don't think you've had one that you like truly enjoyed other than Jameson. I can't name one at least. You might have. You know what I mean? But I mean, I like Tito's. Yeah, that doesn't taste like doesn't much. Doesn't taste though. like anything yeah. though. Right. It's not that strong. Like Tito's is honestly the best vodka out there. Right. But I've become more of a whiskey guy, and this is vodka, right? Yeah, it's vodka. So, I don't know. I mean, keep doing the shots here, buddy. We yeah, get used we'll to it. We'll find something new. You got uh, you got some Irish whiskeys in there to try. So I got some whiskeys in there. We'll that's dive be, into those next time. I just thought that's going to be weird. When I was picking it tonight, I was like, that's going to be weird to chug. Usually I sip, sip my uh, sorry, sip my whiskey, but. I, I mean, I don't see. I know you said chug, you probably didn't mean it, but, like, I don't see shots as, like, chugging them. But, yeah, I, I know what you mean when it comes to, like, a sipping whiskey. There are sipping whiskeys and there's shooting whiskeys, you know? Yeah. And I think the ones you bought are shooting whiskeys, except for the, um, what was the nice one that you bought? You're like, oh, I should sip this one instead. Oh, the red label. Yeah, Johnny Walker red label. That one's not that nice, though. You might honestly want to shoot that. Yeah, probably the black like, label. Yeah, black blue label, label, blue label, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Came back <laughs> up again. Oh. No, you have, too, is the Glenn Levitt. Yeah, I'm going to sip that one week, too. We should find something. You want, to we sip. could do it on air if you want. You want to sip them one week? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. It'd be nice. That'd be nice. Okay, I want to get Glenn Levitt. Every time, every 
Now that I saw it, I see it at the uh, Well, the weird thing is, too, I wanted you to have some of the Glenn Levitt. So, like, we're not going to sip, like, 25 milliliters of whiskey. Like, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll enjoy it, but we're not going to sit here with, like, one ice cube and <laughs> sip half of a half of a mouthful of whiskey. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Got, like, a massive Save that for later. Next to us. <laughs> <laughs> Big stogie. Like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I smoke stogies. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. He goes, because I'm the man. Oh. Yeah. But he goes. I forget uh, what he says. He like roasts the entire community. Yeah, he goes. Why does my wife let me? Why does my wife let me smoke stogies in the house? And he laughs. He goes, his fa- her father smokes stogies, and he allows me to smoke stogies. And so what? What he goes? He goes. Uh, he goes. What is she gonna say? No to her father. Her father's always right, which means I'm right. And he goes. And then he laughs. He goes. Look at you, you puny human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> before we go, actually, did you see Yarmir Yager's post? No. Oh my God! Let me pull it up. I for, oh, I don't think I saved it actually. I can't pull it up right now. But we talked about him getting framed by that girl for it wasn't ten thousand. It was like two thousand. It was way less than we thought. Remember oh, what I was talking pet. about? Yep. There was another post that he put up this week in the Czech league. He was with some woman, and he's posting about it's like this this long lengthy caption. I'll I'll put it right here for you guys, and it's something along the lines of like. Look at this beautiful woman. We're talking today. She's so intelligent. And we're not talking about the beauty of a woman's breast. We're talking about, like, rocket science or some crap, dude. It's like he did not need to put that caption there. And it was hilarious that he did. He just chiefed her on his caption, dude. So Yaga doesn't give a fuck. He's an animal, dude. He's he's hysterical. And he's still him. ripping it up in the check league, him. dude. Was it last, last year he randomly put a post on... Uh, Instagram. I think this is like during the summertime. He got ripped. Like he, he did. Looks yeah. Like Wolverine. He looked like Wolverine. He's got his arms Insane. crossed. We'll throw that one up too. Jesus. And then the last one I had, I was talking to Kyle about it. He's like, dude, Yager's hilarious. There's one year he's on the Bruins and uh, they're doing like player interviews. And David Krejci comes on. He's like, my name's David Krejci. My favorite player is Yarmir Yager. And he goes to Yager and he pops up. He's like, my name's Yarmir Yager. And my favorite player is Yarmir Yager. <laughs> 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 like that's fucking hysterical. You can't hate him. Classic. You gotta love him. Yeah. You gotta love him. All right, guys. Uh, thank you all for listening in, uh, watching episode 14. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. If there's anything you want to see us cover next episode, let us know. Our links are in the description below. We'll see you all next week. Have a good night. Later. Let me ask you something. When my wife's father has introduced me to Stogies, what is she going to say? She's not going to say my father made a mistake because her father never makes a mistake. So therefore, it is okay. I can smoke stogies around her. I can smoke stogies in my house. First of all, because her father introduced me to stogies. And second of all, because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you.